Hi, I'm Christoph Jens from Tangible Engineering. Welcome to Tangible Architect. A quick personal note, I ask you to apologize for my terrible accent. And with that, let's begin. This is the first in a series of six short videos. In this first introduction video, you'll get a glance at a simple sample application that was built using Tangible Architect. The subsequent five videos are designed as tutorials along the process of creating an application using Tangible Architect. We'll show you a step-by-step -step how you can build an application in record time. Let's go! What you're seeing on the screen is a simple two-tier .NET database application that was built using Tangible Architect. The application is a simplistic CRM tool which enables users to store customer accounts, including photos, employee information, and relationships between customers and employees. What's really incredible about this application is that more than 99% of the code has been generated by Tangible Architect. Based on a UML model, Tangible Architect generates the database schema and the business objects. For example, customer, employee, and service request objects. You can use a drag and drop approach to design your user interface based on these business objects. Tangible Architect interconnects the business objects with the database and the user interface automatically. Tangible Architect also helps you to deploy the database schema to the database and makes sure that it matches the pre-installed product version. Let's go back to the sample application. Here's the basic data concerning John Hilton, our sample employee, payroll information, and an overview of the customer service by John. And here you can see a list of all customers. Please note that you don't have to care about getting data from the database and filling data in the user controls, or putting data back to the database. Tangible Architect generates all the necessary infrastructure for you. Now let's play around a little bit with our application. Say the user wants to associate customer Kathy Martin with employee John Hilton. We select Kathy, click on Add Customer, and here we go. Kathy has been added to John's account. Now suppose the user wants to change any kind of data. For example, he wants to change Kathy's last name. We just select Kathy and enter the new name. Then we leave the element and as you can see, Kathy's name has been changed down here as well. This works automatically thanks to the .NET data binding framework used by Tangible Architect. Adding a new employee is equally simple. We just click the new button on the binding navigator and get a new instance of an employee class. The user interface reminds me of required fields. We fill in the data for the employee and select the state. And we add new payroll information in the data grid. Tangible Architect automatically manages the parent-child relationship between employee and payroll information and updates the user interface accordingly. The demo that we've shown you is really simple, of course, but the interesting part is that the shown functionality was almost completely generated by Tangible Architect. What works for this little sample application also works for large real-life applications. And finally, enabling applications to work perfectly in a multi-user environment requires only a few lines of additional code. By the way, one of Tangible Architect's pretty unique features is the drag and drop user interface design. It allows you to create great looking user interfaces in a fraction of the time it used to take. It sounds almost too good to be true, but it took me just 20 minutes to build this sample application. The reason? Less than 1% of the code has been handwritten. The rest has been generated by Tangible Architect. For our advanced sample, the portion of the generated code was 93%, and for large real-life applications with a lot of business logic, you can still expect to generate as much as 70% of your code. In the next videos, we'll show you step-by-step -step how you too can use Tangible Architect to create .NET database applications in record time. The first step for a new project is always to model your business objects. You can either use UML or work with the class wizards. Please proceed to the UML modeling tutorial or the class wizard tutorial, or go back to the overview page. Thank you very much for your attention.